Ronaldo Luis Nazario de Lima, or simply Ronaldo, has wowed the world with his mesmerizing ball control, clinical finishing skills, and infectious smile for well over a decade. Winner of the FIFA World Player of the Year on three occasions, the Brazilian is a true icon of the world game. He was born into a humble family on September 22, 1976, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. He was the youngest of three brothers and was quick to show signs of his incredible talent. Whether he was playing on the beach with his friends or in the back streets with his brothers, Ronaldo's love of life and football was infectious. Even today, his former neighbours are proud to be associated with the superstar. We are all in agreement with calling it Ronaldo Nazario, and we are proud to live on Ronaldo Nazario Street. Ronaldo's football career began at Valkyrie, a local football team in the suburbs of Rio. In 1993, he was spotted and signed by Cruzeiro, one of the largest football clubs in Brazil. At the tender age of 16, he scored 12 times in his first 14 Brazilian championship games. The following season, he found the back of the net another 23 times, leading the competition on score and helping Cruzeiro to the title. Despite playing against men twice his age, Ronaldo seemed to enjoy the challenge. His star was on the rise. He played well and stood out, but we never thought he would be the phenomenon, that he would be such a brilliant star. So impressive were his first two seasons at Cruzeiro that he caught the attention of Brazil's national selectors. And like Pelé before him, he was just 17 when he got the call to join Brazil's FIFA World Cup squad. Although he didn't score any match time, being part of a World Cup winning squad no doubt gave him an invaluable insight into what it takes to get to the top. On returning home from the 1994 World Cup, he was quickly signed by the Dutch club PSV Eindhoven. Ronaldo had an immediate impact, scoring 42 goals in 46 league appearances, claiming the title of Eredivisie top scorer and helping PSV win the Dutch Cup in 1995. However, in 1996, defenders all across the Netherlands heaved a sigh of relief when he was transferred to Spanish club FC Barcelona. Although Ronaldo's stay at Barcelona was only brief, he beat the goalkeeper a remarkable 47 times in only 49 games, leading Barca to the UEFA Cup Winners' Cup, Copa del Rey and Supercopa de España. He also claimed the La Liga Top Scorer Award with 34 goals from 37 appearances, before being transferred to Inter Milan. Ronaldo is free of any contractual obligation to FC Barcelona after having validly bought out his employment contract with the Spanish club. Signed for a then world record fee, Ronaldo's transfer to Inter would present the budding international star with brand new challenges, as he helped Inter Milan to the UEFA Cup win in 1998. But then in November 1999, tragedy struck, when his knee buckled under him, forcing him to limp from the field. Returning too soon to the field in 2000, he injured his knee for a second time. After lengthy rehabilitation, Ronaldo finally made his return to football in early 2002. The phenomenon ended up playing just 16 games for Inter before being transferred back to Spain, but this time to Real Madrid. To put it mildly, the excitement surrounding Ronaldo was reaching fever pitch. Within the first day of signing for Real, his jersey sales broke all previous records. The knee injury is now a distant memory, and Ronaldo was back to his entertaining best. I want to thank Real Madrid president Florentino Perez for doing everything to bring me here. I also want to confirm that I had a very great desire to come to Real Madrid, and I have a great responsibility. And I hope to respond with goals and some beautiful play so that I can live up to everything that's expected of me. His first season back in Spain saw him score 30 goals. Ronaldo's signing came during the Galacticos phase of Real Madrid's history. His was the third of four major signings that took place over a four-year period. Luis Figo, 
Zinedine Zidane and David Beckham were the other three. Real failed to meet fans' expectations. After three consecutive untrophied seasons, between 2004 and 2006, injuries and weight issues led to Ronaldo falling out of favour with manager Fabio Capello and was transferred to AC Milan in 2007. The transfer to AC Milan left many of his former Inter Milan fans with a bad taste in their mouth. With his hasty departure from Inter in August 2002 still fresh in their minds, Ronaldo asked for their respect. I expect the respect of the people who have been with me and that now, obviously, will no longer be on my side. Respect, I believe, is the most important thing. My story with Inter Milan is a very beautiful one, but one that ended badly. Let's not forget that the team's coach basically compelled the management to sell me. On other occasions I have refused money, choosing the sporting challenge. This time as well, I had offers from Saudi Arabia and the United States. I could also have stayed in Madrid. But the challenge to come to AC Milan and show the whole world that my story is not over is a great motivation for me. Unfortunately though, his footballing journey in Italy was on its last legs. Playing only 20 games for AC Milan and scoring just nine times, he left the pitch after going down heavily during a 1-1 Serie A draw at home to Livorno. Scans revealed that the three-time World Player of the Year had ruptured a ligament in his left knee and his career in Italy was over. Once again, Ronaldo was faced with the gruelling task of rehabilitation. Flamengo, one of the larger Brazilian football clubs, gladly opened their doors to the ageing champion, allowing him to train with them on his road to recovery. As Ronaldo's fitness improved, the excitement of his return to Brasileiro grew with each passing day. Although he wasn't committed to any club, Flamengo seemed to have the deal wrapped up. However, to everyone's surprise, Ronaldo signed a one-year deal with Flamengo's league rivals, Corinthians. At the time, the Sao Paulo-based Corinthians had just won promotion back to the first division. Ronaldo's signing would go a long way towards sustaining their spot in the first division and putting them in a position to win their first league title since 2005. It's a very important jersey and I'll carry a huge responsibility. I'm sure that I'll be the most in demand during training and I'm sure that I'll be the most demanded in games and I will not run away from this responsibility. I will honour the Corinthians jersey from beginning to end. Flamengo fans clearly felt Ronaldo should have been honouring their jersey instead. Flamengo fan Marcos Pirano found some solace in the thought that the man upstairs would take care of Ronaldo's sinful decision to play for the Corinthians. I feel sad because what this guy did to us is very sad, but he will pay. The man up there is watching, and he will pay the way the man up there chooses. I'm sure the man up there will not forget him. Now in the twilight stage of a long and brilliant career, it is doubtful he will ever get back to the form that saw him win three World Footballer of the Year awards. With a club career that spans more than 15 seasons, Ronaldo has earned his reputation as one of the best strikers to grace a football pitch. Topping the league scoring four times, and winning the European Golden Boot in 1996-97, it is fair to say that it was not the defenders but injury that prevented him from kicking more goals. Despite his amazing club record, there is no question that Ronaldo made his real mark on the international stage when he debuted for Brazil in 1994 in a friendly against Argentina. In his first World Cup in 1994, he was part of the victorious Brazilian squad. Even though he didn't see any game time, he played in the bronze medal winning Brazil team at the 1996 Atlanta Olympic Games. The 1998 FIFA World Cup 
saw Ronaldo continue the great form that won him consecutive FIFA World Player of the Year awards in 1996 and 1997. Leading up to the final with host nation France, he had already scored four times. However, the night before the final, he suffered a convulsive fit that put him out of the team to battle France for the greatest prize in football. Miraculously, he ended up being added to the starting lineup just 72 minutes before the match. During the game, he looked out of sorts and was clearly still feeling the effects of his seizure. I think it was not fair to force Ronaldo to stay until the end of the match. I think that at that stage, Ronaldo was extremely affected psychologically. Following his seizure, it seemed that the football gods were no longer smiling upon the striker from Rio de Janeiro. With injury and scandals never too far away, the 2002 FIFA World Cup provided the perfect opportunity. As in the previous World Cup, Ronaldo led his national team through the group stages, scoring four times in the process. With a sour taste of defeat still in his mouth from the match against France, he scored twice more in the lead-up to the final, including the only goal in the semi-final against Turkey. With Germany the only remaining obstacle between Ronaldo and the World Cup trophy, Ronaldo scored twice in the final, leading Brazil to a 2-0 victory and claiming their fifth World Cup. With eight goals to his name for the tournament, Ronaldo deservedly won the golden shoe. Despite his incredible performance, he was just beaten by German goalkeeper Oliver Kahn for the golden ball awarded to the most valuable player. The 2006 World Cup was Ronaldo's fourth. Despite the controversy over his dramatic weight gain, he continued to be selected in the starting lineup. On scoring his first goal for the tournament against Japan, he became the 20th player ever to score in three different World Cups. He scored twice more during the tournament, leaving him with the all-time World Cup final scoring record of 15. Brazil was knocked out of the 2006 World Cup in the quarterfinals by France, their worst result since 1990. As a result, new manager Dunga is committed to ending the star culture within the Brazilian national team. Although Ronaldo hasn't played a game for Brazil since, he may yet gain selection if his fitness improves. We are only going to see the Ronaldo of our dreams in four to six months, because his return to fitness will be much more difficult than the other players who took part in the pre-season. There is no doubt that Ronaldo would love to play in a fifth World Cup. However, he is facing an uphill climb to prove he is fit enough. Currently sitting on 69 goals from 97 appearances for his national team, Ronaldo is 15 goals away from becoming the all-time greatest goal scorer for Brazil. Not only does he hold the record for the most goals kicked in World Cup history, but he is also the second player ever to score at least three goals in each of three World Cups. Despite being pipped at the post in 2002, he had already claimed the World Cup golden ball in France in 1998. With a busy football career to manage and maintain, one could be forgiven for thinking that Ronaldo's schedule left little time for extracurricular activities. However, he seems to find time to focus on plenty of things outside of football. In April of 1999, he married his first wife, female Brazilian footballer Melanie Dominguez. Taking an unorthodox approach to romance, Ronaldo proposed to Melanie after seeing her play football on television. The marriage lasted four years during which their son Ronald was born in April 2000. His second marriage, this time to Brazilian model Daniela Ciccarelli, moved along a lot faster. In 2005, they got engaged, had a wedding costing approximately 700,000 euros and then separated, all in the space of three months. Riaca Oliveira was another of Ronaldo's high-profile romances. Riaka Oliveira, who is known all over the world for her modelling work with designers like Dior, Chanel and Victoria's Secret, dated Ronaldo up until December of 2006. In April 2008, there was one brief liaison that Ronaldo may wish to forget. The scandal that involved the striker and three transvestite call girls not only brought him bad press, it also put him in hot water with girlfriend Maria Beatrice Antony, who has since had his daughter. However, not all of Ronaldo's off-field antics revolve around scandals or romance. He also puts a lot of time into charities. 
During his career, he has been the Goodwill Ambassador for the United Nations Development Program, where, alongside other greats of the game, he runs workshops for underprivileged children, as well as playing charity matches to raise money and other worthy causes like ending poverty. My involvement started a long time ago. In the year 2000, I was invited by the United Nations to be a Goodwill Ambassador. This involves a lot of projects and missions around the world, always trying to achieve peace and finding solutions and money to fight against poverty. With so much dedication needed to play football at the highest level, it is incredible that players like Ronaldo can find the time to give back to the community. It has set a great example for the next generation of elite footballers to follow. Over his career, Ronaldo has played in some of the greatest teams of the modern era, putting him in the privileged position of playing alongside some of the best players football has ever seen, who have no doubt helped shape him into the brilliant striker he's become. Although they were never on the pitch at the same time, Brazilian football legend and icon of Ronaldo, Zico is considered to be one of the best footballers of all time. Playing as an attacking midfielder, he is widely regarded as one of the greatest dribblers and finishers. During the 1980s, at the peak of his career, he was lauded as arguably the best footballer of his era. During his remarkable 23-year club career, he played 334 games and scored 193 goals. Internationally, Zico played 72 times for his country and scored 52 goals. However, despite playing in three World Cup campaigns, he never won the cup. Marco van Basten is another footballer who inspired Ronaldo as a youngster growing up in Rio de Janeiro. Van Basten, who is known as one of the finest forwards of all time, scored 280 goals in a career that was cut short by injury. His reoccurring ankle injury forced him to retire from football when he was still in his 20s, one year after he was declared FIFA World Player of the Year. For his national side, the Netherlands, he played 58 times and scored 24 goals. Diego Maradona was another footballer that Ronaldo looked up to, perhaps the world's best ever. His most famous moment came when he captained Argentina to World Cup success in 1986. Former Real Madrid teammate and the only other player to win three FIFA World Player of the Year awards, Zinedine Zidane has also tasted World Cup success. The Frenchman played an impressive 506 league matches, scoring 95 times as an attacking midfielder. Although he didn't find the net on as many occasions as other legends of the game, he certainly made up for it with assists. Zidane's cross and through balls were so precise that any striker would love to have him on their side. Luckily for Ronaldo, Zidane played alongside him during Real Madrid's Galacticos era. However, the brilliant teammates don't stop at club level. Whilst playing for his national side, he had midfielders like Kaka and Ronaldinho to dazzle defenders and set up great goal-scoring opportunities. Ronaldinho, who is widely regarded as one of the most gifted footballers of his generation, has won the FIFA World Player Year Award twice and joined Ronaldo as part of the 2002 FIFA World Cup All-Star team. Kaka, who has a unique style of football with the techniques of a Brazilian and the physical prowess of a European, has also won the FIFA World Player of the Year. No doubt, now that Ronaldo is past his prime, Kaka and Ronaldinho will play a major role in future World Cup campaigns for Brazil. Ronaldo's fun personality and infectious smile, not to mention his incredible football talent, made him one of football's first marketable superstars. With over 190 million football-mad people living in Brazil, any player who makes it to the national side is crowned an instant hero. And one as talented as Ronaldo, who wins his country a World Cup, becomes a football god. Like the legends before him, Ronaldo was awarded the honour of leaving his footprints at Maracana Stadium's Walk of Fame. In June 2004, his footprints joined the likes of Brazilian football stars Pelé, Zico, Romário and Zagallo. 
Maracana Stadium will be the home of the 2014 World Cup, the second time the stadium will host the event. The stadium is an icon of football in Brazil, and Ronaldo was overwhelmed by the honour. I am privileged because I can do what I enjoy. To be rewarded as a player who is making history through his tribute. While he was recovering from his knee surgery in 2000, he funded a Brazilian version of the Valladolid debate by French playwright Jean-Claude Carrière. The play, which is set in the 16th century, explores the treatment of Indians in newly discovered South America. I believe that this is a beautiful thing. I'm doing this from the heart, trying to motivate people to go to the theatre more. It's not only the arts that Ronaldo has ploughed his money into. Along with two-time Formula One world champion Emerson Fittipaldi, he was co-owner of Brazil's entry to A1 Racing in 2005. With a large motorsport following in Brazil, the team has massive marketing potential. And Ronaldo knows all about that. His own marketability as a young football star was what Nike saw when they signed up as a sponsor all those years ago. The Brazilian striker was one of the first footballers to loosen the purse strings of the massive sportswear manufacturer's marketing budget, which was formally committed to American sports like basketball. However, the massive endorsements and benefits that Ronaldo has received over the years from Nike, not to mention his lifetime contract worth around 70 million euros, has had some downsides. In 1998, there were rumours that the sportswear giant pretty much forced him to take the field in the World Cup final, despite clearly being unwell. True or not, luckily for everyone involved, Ronaldo didn't do any lasting damage and was able to go on to reach more dazzling heights in his career. The winner of around 50 personal honours so far, he is one of the most decorated footballers the game has ever seen. After taking out countless Player of the Year awards, top scoring trophies and Team of the Year awards, it would be fair to say that the Laureus Comeback of the Year award in 2002 that marked his return from injury holds a special place in his heart. With a brilliant career drawing to a close, Ronaldo has achieved everything a footballer could wish for. He's won titles at every club he's played for. And that's just the tip of a trophy cabinet overflowing with hallowed treasures. The most notable of which would be his three FIFA World Player of the Year awards and his two Ballon d'Ors for the European Player of the Season. From the beaches of Rio Janeiro to the multiple knee injuries, Ronaldo Luis Nazario's career has seen it all. The highs and the lows have all formed part of an incredible journey that has seen him win two World Cups before succumbing to injury and making a remarkable comeback in 2002. The question remains, can he make a fifth World Cup? Let's hope so.